Hey everyone, in this video we'll be making this really simple chat application where you can type a message, hit send message here, and it'll send. They don't even get sorted, but we'll talk about that later in the video. The goal of this is to show off Firebase. It's clearly not to show off front end or design skills here. And so I want to cover a little bit of some different resources. We're going to make a brand new folder. We're starting from a blank slate here. So let me go make a folder called chat app and we'll go into this folder and do Firebase and knit. I'm only going to pick two features from this first list, which is hosting and emulators. If you pick more and you run into an error about cloud resource location, I suggest just using the Firebase console to set up your project. I'm not actually positive that's a bug. We're going to create a new project here, and I believe this has to be unique across all projects. So we're gonna come up with just Adam13531 chat app. That way it's definitely gonna be unique. And what we wanna call the project, I'll just have a default to that same project ID. This next part takes a little bit of time. All right, that's done. It just went and configured everything on Firebase itself. So now we have a project. What do we want to use as our public directory? I'm going to go with a default. A single page app would be maybe if you're using something like a front end framework like React or Angular. I am not going to be doing that. We're going to do everything in vanilla JS. So I'll just manage URLs myself. And then what emulator do we want to set up for now? I'll just pick hosting. We will modify this later. I prefer port 3000. You can pick whatever you want. And then yes, you want to download the emulators if you don't already have them. I do, so this completes instantaneously. Like I said, what this did on Firebase is create all of the project structure that we need. What it did locally is we now have a firebase.json file and this points our emulator port 3000, has some basic hosting configuration, and it also produced two files in public, a 404 page and an index page. So if we want to, we can start up the emulator right now and we can go to localhost 3000 and we'll see their basic page that they have set up. We could also deploy this directly to Firebase hosting itself. And this shouldn't take too long. And it spits out a URL at the end of this. And we could actually go directly to that URL. And that's it. Our site is online. It just doesn't do anything yet. If we were to go to some random URL in here now, we would see the 404 page that you saw in that public folder. Let's take a look at what's actually happening. Let's start modifying the app. In this public folder, we have index.html. And this is what Firebase gives you by default. They initialize some libraries here. They also have this init.js script, which has the application initialization, which has things like your project ID and your app ID from the project settings page. And this is just automatically done for you. They have the rest of the page, some HTML setup and some JavaScript. And we can see some example code here that's commented out. What we're gonna do is just wipe this out completely. We're gonna make a very simple button. We'll call it Google Login, and we'll say Login with Google on it. And then I've got some code on my clipboard right now that has our login. And by the way, by saving that, it just formatted everything thanks to an extension that I have. So ignore that part. On clicking this button, it's going to make a new Google Auth provider and then call Sign In with Popup. If that works, the only way we'll know that it worked is because we'll see success in the console. And if it doesn't work, then we'll see an error. There's nothing else to our UI other than this button. So there's not really too much feedback that we're going to get. So let me go get the emulation command again, and we'll run the emulator. This is what our page had looked like. And now when I refresh, we have the login button. And I'm gonna press F12 to open dev tools here. And we have some errors about inner HTML. Let's ignore those for now and click login. I'm gonna take this off screen and we see an error that says the identity provider configuration is disabled. This is very easy to fix. We will go into Firebase and we'll go to the project that we have. And then in authentication, we can see the different sign-in methods that are enabled here. So Google is disabled. Let's go enable that. And that's it. We're just gonna enable it. I can actually, let me choose the email address off screen for a sec. No, that's fine. Yeah, I will save this and that should be it. Now we're gonna go try logging in again. I'm not even gonna refresh this page. We are just going to click login. And now I get to pick my email address and it should say success. We just logged in with very little effort. And if we wanted to, we could examine all the different parts of what we get back from logging in. This function here of signing with pop-up actually does return a result and does have some sensitive information in it, but I'd be able to get things like my display name and my photo URL. Not that we really need it for this, but we're gonna duplicate this button and make it log out. This is helpful for testing even if your app doesn't really need it because you'll be able to log in as a new user without having to go delete things from IndexedDB. And to log out, it is as simple as a one-line call to sign out. 
we have a sign out button and I can show you, but there's no feedback about this yet. So let's go add in something that's just going to tell us what the current user is. And we'll say that no user is signed in or that we don't have user data. And now we're going to use a very special event listener function here called on auth state changed. What's going to happen is we're going to call sign in with pop-up and then Firebase is going to save credentials into index DB for us. Whenever Firebase finds that a session has been persisted, it's going to load that and identify itself with Google Identity Toolkit again, and then call into this on auth state changed. So we'll get a user here and we can extract the email and say you were logged in as that email. And if you log out, the same thing will happen. It'll go through this on auth state changed and go to this, you are not logged in. So now let's go test this out. I'll refresh the page. So it says no user is signed in and then immediately logged me in. The reason why is because Firebase had those credentials saved from last time. But if I click log out now, it should just immediately say you are not logged in. What we've done already and very quickly is powerful here. We've logged in, we've logged out, and we have the ability to add in other providers if we wanted to. The officially supported ones out of the box are ones like Twitter, GitHub, Microsoft.